Sloth bears inhabit forested areas, including the tropical rainforests of India and grasslands at lower elevation. They have very shaggy hair and long noses. They use their claws to dig. They can then use their lips to form a tube which can go deep into the ground or into hard to reach areas like dead trees for their food. Their main food is termites. You can hear them suck up their food from several feet away. That sounds interesting. It sounds like an interesting wild creature, right? Can you imagine having a sloth bear as a pet? Yeah, it sounds as weird as you think it is. But maybe it isn't really so weird. I'll tell you why. We'll find out when we read this interesting story, which displays the love and friendship between a human being and wild animals. This story is The Bond of Love, written by Kenneth Anderson, who was an avid nature lover. A Bond of Love by Kenneth Anderson. I will begin with Bruno, my wife's pet sloth bear. I got him for her by accident. Two years ago, we were passing through the sugarcane fields near Mysore. People were driving away the wild pigs from the fields by shooting at them. Some were shot and some escaped. We thought that everything was over when suddenly a black sloth bear came out panting in the hot sun. Now, I will not shoot a sloth bear wantonly, but unfortunately for the poor beast, one of my companions did not feel that way about it and promptly shot the bear on the spot. As we watched the fallen animal, we were surprised to see that the black fur on its back moved and left the prostrate body. Then we saw that it was a baby bear that had been riding on its mother's back when the sudden shot had killed her. The little creature ran around its prostrate parent, making a pitiful noise. I ran up to it to attempt a capture. It scooted into the sugarcane field. Following it with my companion, I was at last able to grab it by the scruff of its neck while it snapped and tried to scratch me with its long hooked claws. We had put it in one of the gunny bags we had brought. And when I got back to Bangalore, I duly presented it to my wife. She was delighted. She had once put a colored ribbon around its neck and after discovering the cub was a boy, she christened it Bruno. Bruno soon took to drinking milk from a bottle. It was but a step further and within a very few days, he started eating and drinking everything else. And everything is the right word for he ate porridge made from any ingredients, vegetables, fruits, nuts, meat, especially pork, curry, rice, regardless of the condiments, and chilies, bread, eggs, sausages, sweets, pudding, ice cream, etc, etc, etc. As for drink, milk, tea, coffee, lime juice, aerated water, buttermilk, beer, alcoholic liquor, um, and in fact, anything liquid. It all went down with relish. This bear became very attached to our two Alsatian dogs and to all the children of the tenants living in our bungalow. He was left quite free in his younger days and spent his time in playing, running into the kitchen and going to sleep in our beds. Well, a sloth bear for a pet. Sounds unusual, doesn't it? Trust me, it gets more interesting. But before we read further, we have to understand what the author is trying to say. As we saw, the author begins with the incident about how he found Bruno, his wife's pet sloth bear. A couple of years ago, actually, the author and his friends had got hunting to Mysore. As they were passing through the sugarcane fields, they saw the villagers driving away wild pigs from the fields by shooting them. Some were shot while some others escaped. Just when it seemed that everything was over, a black sloth bear came out panting in the hot sun. Without a second thought, 
one of the author's companions shot the bear on the spot. Now, as the bear lay dead, they saw some movement of the black fur on its back, and to their surprise, a baby bear had been riding on its mother's back. When the sudden shot had killed her, immediately, the author ran up to the little bear to capture it, and after some chasing around, the author and his companions were able to grab it. When they tried to catch hold of the cub, it went on to scratch the author with its long hooked claws and eventually they managed to put it in a gunny bag. The author then presented it to his wife in Bangalore. She was extremely happy. On finding out that the little boy bear cub was her gift, she even named him Bruno and tied a little ribbon around his neck. Soon Bruno began drinking milk from a bottle within the next few days. He started eating and drinking possibly everything else. And now by everything, I mean everything. He ate porridge made from vegetables, fruits, nuts, meat, curry, rice. He didn't mind spices, chilies. I mean, bring it on for him. To add to all of that, he also ate bread, eggs, chocolate, sweets. It didn't end with drinks. He went on for milk, tea, coffee, lime juice, aerated water, buttermilk, let's not forget, beer and other alcoholic drinks. <whistles> this little bear cub seems to have quite an appetite. So eventually, the bear became very attached to the author's little dogs, the Alsatians, and to the children of the tenants who stayed in the author's bungalow at that time. When Bruno was young, he was left free. And so he spent his time playing, running into the kitchen, even sleeping on their beds. I wonder what happens next when the bear grew up. But before, we need to move on to some word meanings. For now, let us look at some significant word meanings across this part of the story. The first word we have is panting. Panting means to be out of breath. This word is referring to the mother sloth bear. Next word we have is wantonly. Wantonly means in a deliberate manner. Next, we have the word promptly, which means immediately. After that, the word fallen, which means in descending and dead. The word here is used to indicate the dead mother sloth bear. On the list, next, we have the word prostrate, which means to lie with the face down and arms stretched out. The word pitiful means full of pity. It was used to indicate the sound of the bear cub as it ran around its dead mother. Then we have the word scooted, which means to move quickly. The bear cub ran around the sugarcane fields to escape from the author and his friends. This is the context where scooted has been used in the story. Scruff refers to the back of the animal's neck. The word christened means to name someone. This is used to refer to the fact that the author's wife named the bear cub Bruno. Porridge, of course, many of you might know, is a dish cons consisting of oatmeal or another meal or cereals boiled in water or milk. Condiments refer to substances such as salt, mustard or pickle that is used to add flavor to food. Next, we have aerated, which refers to a drink which has gas added to liquid. Next, pork is the flesh of a pig used as food. And finally, we have the word relish, which means to eat something with great enjoyment. The word indicates that Bruno ate and drank almost everything with great relish. With these words out of our way, let's go on to read the next part of the amusing story. Tutimate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store.